Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name's Nadia and this is the place we get real. I just brushed my name. It's Nadia. It sounded like I said, my name's Nadia. What? My name is Nadia. Sort of similar to Narnia, like from the Chronicles of Narnia, The Witch in the Wardrobe. Have you guys read that series, by the way? Honestly, one of my favorite like childhood series growing up. Anyway, bit of a random segue because if you are new here, I talk about sex mostly <laughs> and relationships and I've started doing more of these more relaxed kind of chit chatty style videos because the regular uh, viewers among you are loving them and you are asking for more and I like to deliver. So let's get into today's topic because it is quite a juicy one. Now, this is juicy for a number of reasons and kind of the main reason is because it goes against everything that we get taught about female sexuality. Now, I wrote an article a few months ago talking about open relationships and I talked about my own experiences being in an open relationship. After that column went live, I was flooded with emails and messages from women. And these were not women writing to criticize my very alternative lifestyle choice. These were women hungry for more information on how they could do this in their own relationships. And I hear from women constantly saying that they want to be in more of an open relationship arrangement. And I think it's so interesting because Pretty much all of the women who write to me are absolutely convinced that they are alone in this desire, that this is very unique, that maybe it might mean there's something wrong with them, they're worried it might mean there's something wrong with their relationship because they've never heard other women talk about this. By the way, the constant creaking sound, I don't know if it's coming through in the audio, hopefully it's not, it's my very crappy ring light that I've got here because the sun is going down out my window so apologies for the creaking because my ring light is falling apart hopefully it doesn't fall on my head during the taping and yeah apologies for the light quality but you guys didn't come here for the audio visual you came here to learn about sex so I think it's really interesting because women are told this that we are told that you know essentially that we don't really want sex we're told that it's something that women aren't really interested in it's really something that we just exchange with men in hetero relationships at least in return for monogamy and commitment and fidelity all of that and we are told constantly that men don't really like sexual monogamy men actually really want a lot of novelty and variety and you know we hear a lot of jokes about you know the wife being like the ball and chain and the man feeling like really tied down also noticing the light is changing again. Hopefully it's not too uh, dramatic. Anyway, I know you guys are here for the information. So, but here's the thing about it. And that is that this could not be more, tr more untrue. We actually know from all of the research, and I've done a lot of research on this over the years as a sex columnist, that women really, really strongly desire and want sex throughout our lives, regardless of we're in a monogamous relationship or not. But what tends to happen is women get in these long-term relationships and we convince ourselves that our libido is broken. We tell ourselves, I don't know what's wrong with me. I just don't want sex anymore. And we go onto Dr. Google and we start looking up pills and treatments and solutions and things to fix our broken libido. But our libidos aren't usually broken in this situation. And the reason I say this, this is because Often when I speak to women who claim that they have a broken libido, I'll ask them questions like, do you have solo sex? You know, the kind of thing you do on your own to pleasure yourself. And they'll be like, yeah. Uh, do you enjoy checking out other sexy men on the street? Yeah. Do you watch a little bit of adult X-rated viewing on the internet, if you know what I mean? Yeah. Most of the women who claim they don't have any desire for sex are do in many other ways showing that they have a strong desire. In fact, some of the women who've stopped having sex with their partners will go out and have affairs. Now, I'm not here to condone affairs. This isn't a video to say go out and cheat. 
because uh, cheating is wrong. I don't agree with it. Cheating can be very destructive to a relationship because it's breaking down the communication and the trust that you have with your partner because it involves deceit. And, th and that trust can be very hard to rebuild. But I do think it's interesting that women who are doing these things, whether it's having an affair or watching X-rated stuff online or whatever, in, you know, checking out other men on the street, that they are still convinced that their libido is broken because society has just really convinced women that, um, you know, we don't want sex. And so uh, we just we just accept, like at the first sign, like that we stop having in our relationship, I guess, you know, my libido has just tanked out. And we, we think that that's something that's pathologically wrong with us and it's our male partner who always wants it. And I do have a lot of men who come to me and complain like, oh, this sucks, you know, we my wife and I, we did it all the time in the beginning and now we never do it. Like, this is, this is terrible. Like, I didn't sign up for this. And what men don't realize and what a lot of women don't realize is that women do want to be doing it. They just don't want the same kind of repetitious, predictable physical intimacy. Research actually proves that it's women, not men, it's women who need a high amount of sexual novelty and mystery and spontaneity in order to keep interested. And so that's why we will start to have these fantasies outside of the relationship. We'll want to do things like open the relationship and have like an arrangement with our partner where it's like, okay, I can go and sleep with other people besides you. And that's going to give me that hit of variety and novelty and mystery because we, we crave that so much, but we're, we're not taught about this. And so we so often think there's something wrong with us. And I think the fact that women, women do end up, some women do end up doing exploring this side of ourselves by having affairs is really sad because it just shows that we don't feel we can be honest and open with our partners about it and we'd rather live this double life of deceit than just talk about what it is we want and this is why you know on this channel all the time i encourage having these open relationships with your partner now in terms of actually the research around women um, getting bored very fast when it comes to sex. There has been a lot of research done on this, like a lot. There's been several peer-reviewed longitudinal studies. And so these are studies that were carried out over five, six, seven years involving thousands of women. And they found that pretty much across the board, and they did this in different countries around the world, that once a woman moved in with her partner, Within a year of living together, she had her interest in sleeping with her partner had rapidly declined. And it was so pronounced that they even kind of made a bit of a joke. They, they wrote an article about this study and they kind of made a joke in the article saying, you know, if you want to kill your partner's desire to have sex with you, the best and fastest way to do it is to move in with her. Because within a year of living together, she's going to dramatically lose that desire. And that's why so often it's when people get married that they start saying, wow, our sex life has died. I don't understand why. Because when you live with someone, you have that domesticated, you have that predictability, you're very used to each other's routines, you get into a routine of what time you each go to bed each night, and you tend to get into a routine in terms of when you are physically intimate as well. And the female libido is not excited by that predictability. That predictability is the biggest killer of the female libido and women's desire it's that novelty and it's that mystery that we need and so that's why i see so many women coming to me saying am i a weirdo because i really am actually interested in an open relationship arrangement and so often women say oh i'm sure you must get questions like this from men all the time i actually don't i have had honestly probably over the years maybe a dozen men reach out to me and ask me about how to start a conversation with their wife or their long-term female partner about having an open relationship. But over the years, I've had hundreds, literally hundreds of women reach out to me to say, I really want to talk to my husband or boyfriend about opening our relationship. Am I weird for wanting to do this? So I want to normalize it and say, women want this, women want this more than men. And research shows this too, that it's often women, not men, who want this relationship arrangement. And it's because women are actually biologically not as programmed for monogamy as we might think. If you actually think about monogamy, because people will often argue with me when I talk about monogamy and the fact that it's not natural, 
people get very angry about this. They think that I am invalidating their beliefs or their marriage. I'm not doing that. If you believe in monogamy and you want to have monogamous relationships and you want to get married, you should do that. I'm not stopping you from doing that and I'm not judging you from doing that. All I'm saying is it's not natural. It's going to take you a lot of work to make that work. And the reason we know it's not natural is because marriage and monogamy didn't even become a thing until like a few hundred years ago. We, we have not been doing this throughout all of history. It was only when we had the introduction of agriculture, which is where we started having farming practices and that those farming practices tied people to land. And then when people had land, they were essentially able to accumulate wealth and they needed to hold on to that wealth. They needed to pass it down. And so they got married as an economic arrangement so they could pass on that wealth and that legacy. That's why marriage came about. There was no romantic notion behind it. I understand that it's very romantic now to a lot of people and I'm not saying it can't be, but that's just not where it came from. I think we, we often are like kind of lied to that it's like this supernatural thing that we all have the instinct to do and if you don't want it, then you must not love your partner. Or if you get halfway through your marriage and you decide actually, I want to open this, I want to sleep with other people, that that must mean that you're perverted or there's something wrong with you or your relationship is fundamentally broken. No, throughout literally all of history, this is what people have done. In fact, what's really interesting is throughout most of history, it's something men have done and men have been encouraged to do. Men would have lots of different lovers and even in the Bible, if you look at the Old Testament of the Bible, um, it was, I think, Solomon who had like 300 um, concubines and like 100 wives or something. You know, he had a lot of women in his life. And at some point in history, rather than saying, let's let women in on this as well, let's let women have lots of lovers and we can all have lots of lovers, we decided instead to take that away from men and say, no, now men have to be monogamous as well as women. And that's not worked particularly well for us. If we look at the divorce rates, if we look at the infidelity rates, we know that telling men that they had to be super monogamous, it's not really worked in our favor. Again, not here to criticize anyone's marriage. People will always take it the wrong way. I will get people saying the most hateful things to me in the comment section, like absolutely insistent that I am saying marriage is bad because I am depraved and I want to push my depraved beliefs on everyone. I think that you should have the exact kind of relationship that you and your partner want to have. And if that's marriage and children and tradition and religion, then you should do that. I, and I think that's a beautiful thing. What I'm here to say is that that model not only doesn't work for everyone, but it doesn't work for most people. And most people, particularly women, are made to feel bad about this and they're made to feel bad for having these desires. And that was the thing I noticed when I wrote this article a few months ago about open relationships and I had all these women reach out to me, was all the shame and the embarrassment they had around it. They felt that there was something wrong with them. You know, they would say to me in their emails, is there something wrong with me? Does this, is this a bad sign for my relationship? I'm really scared to talk to my partner about this. And this is what's so wrong with the way that we talk about sex and intimacy is that we have so much shame around it that people aren't even talking to their own partners about it. And so I hope watching this video can spark a conversation between you and your partner. Guys, you only get one life. There are no do-overs unless that's maybe your particular religious belief. But if you're anything like me, you believe that you only get one shot at this life. Do not stay in a situation where you are not having any physical intimacy and you feel trapped and you feel unhappy. Talk to your partner, work something out. And look, an open relationship is not gonna be for everyone and I'm not here to say everyone should go and have an open relationship. In fact, a lot of people are gonna find, no, I don't want that. In that case, that's fine. Find other ways to get that mystery and that novelty and that variety in your relationship so you can start having more physical intimacy then. Maybe that's through having date nights, through little surprises that you do for each other, through doing a bit of role play in the bedroom, anything that can make things feel novel and new. Go on new adventures and visit new places together to get that adrenaline going. If you just keep having that same predictability, don't be surprised that your bedroom life continues to be basically dead. It's, it's really up to you to have these difficult conversations. And yeah, like I say, I hope this video has 
helped you to have that conversation. And I also hope that if you haven't subscribed already, you are gonna make today the day you hit the subscribe button. Hit the notification bell as well because that's gonna mean that YouTube actually lets you know when my videos are going live because some of you are like, oh, I never see when your videos go live. That's because you have not hit the notification bell. So hit that little bell that's under this video. It's next to the subscribe button. It's a little bell icon. Hit it and then YouTube will let you know every time these videos go live. And let me know in the comment section below, what are your thoughts on open relationships, on monogamy? Are you currently in a sex-starved relationship? How are you coping with it? What are some strategies maybe that have worked for you? I think it's great to share this stuff in the comment section. And also, let me know what you'd like my next chit-chatty, unedited raw video to be about. And uh, I might use one of your suggestions for my next video. All right, guys. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time. Mwah.